What's going on guys, Ben from JK Gear and Gadgets and in this video we're going to be testing out a bunch of different spray paints to see which one is the most rust resistant. The reason I'm doing this is because in a lot of my videos people ask me what I use uh, to paint my bumpers, rock rails, really anything that doesn't come powder coated. A lot of times I like to use spray paint because it's easy to touch up but we're going to see which one is the most rust resistant. Let's do it. Welcome back. So before we actually start and go too far into this video, I want to say go ahead and subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, and I want to hear from you. What spray paint have you used in the past that's you know offered you great protection and lasted a long time? Uh, and I also want to hear what you think is going to win or perform the best out of all these spray paints. So let's take a look at what we've got going on here. I got 10 very popular spray paint brands. I also went to Home Depot and got a piece of flat stock mild steel. And what I have over here is salt water. What's the best way to speed up the rust process? Salt water or salt. Um, this isn't just, you know, a bunch of water that pours salt in. As you can tell, it has that kind of nasty tint that is actual salt water from the ocean. 100% legit. Um, so what we're gonna do in this is I'm gonna cut each piece out. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Actually gonna cut 11 pieces out. Um, and we are gonna test all these spray paints. Am I a scientist? No. Am I a paint professionalist? No. Am I a great video maker? No. <laughs> eh, that last one, I'm decent, I'm decent. But what we're gonna do is test out all these paints and see which one is the best, it comes up on top. So we're gonna start over here. Every paint pretty much needs a primer in order to stick to. So our base primer is gonna be this Rust-Oleum Sandable Primer. Um, I've had good luck with this in the past, it's very basic. Um, so we are gonna use that as our base for all of them. I will leave one of these just primered so we can use that as a, uh, you know, kind of a base. I'm, I'm thinking of all my uh, scientific terminology that I learned back in middle school. Uh, this is our constant. Yes, our constant is gonna be one piece of bare metal and one just with primer. Next up, we're gonna go with the Walmart Special 99 cent spray paint. Next up, I've kind of ranked them in order from cheapest to more expensive. And uh, you know, we'll see. I'm, ex I'm expecting the more expensive spray paint to work better, but we'll see. Next up, we have Rust-Oleum, the good old stuff. I really use this the most. Um, I've had good experience with Rust-Oleum and I expect it to uh, perform well. Not too expensive, it's like four bucks for a can. Next up, we have the Krylon. Same thing, gloss black, paint and primer in one. We're still gonna put a base coat of primer down. Next up, a little more expensive than the normal Krylon is the Rust Protector. It's supposed to dry quick, doesn't really say why it's a Rust Protector, but it was a little more expensive and it does have the wording on there. Next up is the Rust-Oleum Hammered. I've used this in the past just because it has a really cool texture to it. Uh, it kind of looks like powder coat once you put it on but it also has the stops rust symbol on there. So we'll see. High heat uh, from Rust-Oleum. This is really good for high temperature applications, but will it help uh, prevent rust? Not really sure. Plasti Dip, had to throw that in there. I'm pretty sure this isn't gonna do too good, but it might surprise us and do really well. Next up, we have the Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer. This paint, I didn't really want to include, but I had to just because, I mean, like, you know, look at it, why not? Um, it's more of, kind of like a primer, it, it changes a rusty surface into a paintable surface. So, I don't know, we'll see how this works. This one I probably won't put primer on, just because it's not designed for that. But this is pricey stuff, this is like 650 for the can. Uh, that should do pretty good. And last but not least, Steel It. A lot of people don't know what this stuff is, but it is actually a stainless steel coating. Uh, this is kind of new, they've had their silver uh, stainless steel coating spray paint for quite a while now and they just came out with this black formula which is interesting uh, it goes on without any primer it's weldable and it actually has particles of stainless steel in it so that should do really good this is extremely pricey but the people who use it say nothing but good things about it so I've never used it before I'm excited to see how all these do but what we're gonna do is 
break out my saw and cut all these pieces, fill our little test bucket up with salt water and put these pieces in here. Let them sit. I have no idea how long this is going to take to start seeing results, but I'm excited to do it. Let's try it out. So as you can tell, it's finally a beautiful day out and it's the perfect day to do this paint job. So got the primer right here and all our pieces are cleaned off, uh, rubbed down with mineral spirits. These are the ones that are gonna need primer. So we're gonna go ahead and prime these. All right, we got them all laid out. We're gonna go ahead and put one layer of paint on all of them. All right, I'll let all these dry, come back in a couple hours, flip them over, paint the other side, and then we're gonna throw them in the salt water. All right, we'll start from left to right, and then we're gonna leave all these here. Got the unpainted, then we got our primered, 99 cent, Krylon, There we go guys, test has begun. We have them all sitting in salt water and they're all in order. So we can come back once a day and reference. Um, right off the bat, the third one from the right, which is Plasti Dip. I see little tiny bubbles uh, forming on it. So I think the Plasti Dip is already getting eaten through. Um, I don't know how long this is gonna take, but we're gonna come back. I'm gonna come back probably once or twice a day and I'll only break out the camera if something has changed. But so we don't lose a lot of the salt, I'm going to cover this up so it's semi-sealed up in there. But I'm excited. Like I said, go down in the comments. Let me know what you think is going to win. So my bet for the best one is going to either be the Steal It or I'm going to stick with the Rust-Oleum. Good luck um, with Rust-Oleum. I've used a ton of these and I think those two are going to come out on top, but we'll see. Let me know what you think. We'll be back in a day. All right, so it's been a little over 24 hours, and as you can tell, the water is starting to get really nasty looking. Um, I can tell that the unpainted uh, piece of metal is already rusting, and I can see the Plasti Dipped one uh, is starting to eat through, but we'll pull out two at a time. And what I might do this time is leave them out on this tray overnight uh, so they're a little more exposed to oxygen. Um, still leave some salt water on them, but just really get that oxidation process going because I don't want this to take, you know, a week and a half until we start seeing stuff. Um, I might throw a little more salt water on them, kind of sprinkle it. Put this back up and we'll be back tomorrow. Welcome back to the second day of the experiment and we are starting to see a little bit of results. So let's bring the camera up. We'll take a look at the unpainted surface and you can clearly see a ton of rust has started to form. The one with just primer has a lot of bubbles in the paint and I'm expecting this uh, to start rusting through within another day or two. Honestly, most of the paint um, has not got eight through yet. There's no signs of rust. Some of them I can see a little bit of bubbles uh, forming on the paint, but not enough to make a conclusion yet. The Plasti Dip has fared pretty bad so far. You can see the rust um, forming on the Plasti Dip really quick, within two days. But all the other ones are holding up really well. So tonight, I'm going to go back and throw them inside um, and let them soak in the water and then kind of alternate. One day in the water, one day out. One day in the water, one day out. It's crazy because you can see all this, uh, the rust here on the top. I think you know all these lines from where the squares were it wasn't those rusting it was the rusty water from our bear piece was kind of spread out uh, in the water so sealed up stay tuned for the next day it's been a full seven days since we started this test and we are finally starting to see results I kind of quit doing the daily update thing because when I was going back and editing this video, it was starting to get redundant, kind of boring. Uh, but as you can tell, there's something behind me that was not there in the last video. These axles are kind of the reasoning behind doing this spray paint test. I am building a set of axles for my Jeep, and once these are done, I'm going to have to paint them, and I wanted to choose a paint that's going to hold up the longest, you know, be the best at preventing rust. So here is the results of seven days of being in salt water. 
Right off the bat, we see the unpainted surface is just completely rusted. Um, <laughs> the primer, the piece with just the primer, has actually rusted through pretty quick. A lot of rust around the edges. Next up, we had the Walmart uh, 99 cent spray paint. And while it's not horrible, there's definitely some rust forming on these edges. And uh, I don't see this holding up much longer at all. Next up, we have the two Krylons, the normal and the rust uh, preventative. So we have this one right here is the normal Krylon actually holding up pretty good. Little bit of rust there on the surface, that bottom edge. Um, but other than that, it's doing pretty good, and it looks like the rust preventative Krylon is doing about the same. A little bit of rust on the edge, but nothing crazy. Next up, we have the Rust-Oleum, and it is actually doing really good. That was kind of my guess. Um, I've always had better luck with Rust-Oleum opposed to Krylon, and that is showing. We only have a little bit of rust right there on the tip, on the top edge. Next up, we have the Rust-Oleum Hammered. And we are starting to see some rust on the edges, on that edge, and uh, all along that edge, rust is starting to form. I've used this in the past, and honestly, it, it, it's a really nice looking paint. Uh, it's kind of like a, a grayish black, as you can see, but as for holding up to rust, it doesn't do too well. Here we have the Rust-Oleum High Heat, and that is not doing very good. You can see all that rust forming on the edges a little bit right there in the corner that's i mean that's not really a paint that's designed for stuff like this It's more for your grills and stuff that you know can withstand higher temperatures plasti dip just doing bad <laughs> doing horrible we got a bunch of rust over there all along this corner rust only rust reformer another big disappointment um as you can tell a lot of rust forming on these edges um and definitely not doing so hot and of course last but not least the steel it this is definitely doing the best out of all of them um i can't find any signs of rust but one thing i did notice is that the paint on this bottom side is bubbling up a little bit you can see that on the camera um while it has not broke through and shown any signs of rust it is definitely bubbling up a little bit i've never been more excited for a project to end it's been two weeks and finally, we're starting to see results and see which one is the winner. There's clearly one that outperformed all of them. So let's check it out. But before we look at the metal, uh, take a look at the top of the box, man. A lot of rust up there. And then actually in the water, you can just see chunks of rust. Really, really gross. So I uh, every day I came out here and alternated it between soaking in the water and sitting up here on the lid. And uh, that really sped up the process a lot. It was taking a long time just soaking in the water. So. Here's all the metal, and as you can tell, almost each one of them has signs of rust on there. So let's pick up the metal and put it on the respective spray paint and see how each one did, and let's talk about it. We'll start off by taking a look at the unpainted piece of metal. As you can tell, this thing is just extremely rusty, and it was actually more rusty than this. Right now, it's mostly just surface rust, because what I realized is that each time I took it out of the water uh, and then put it back in, the big chunks of rust that were actually eating through the metal were falling off into the water. But clearly you can tell this thing did not do well and it wouldn't take very long for that to start eating through the metal. So then we'll start over here with just the uh, Rust-Oleum primer. Now primer is a great um, base, especially when there's paint over it, but just primer alone, as you can tell, there's a ton of rust forming on the edges. And that's what I was talking about. Most paint, um, the failure is gonna be right on a hard edge. It's the easiest place for rust and honestly for the paint to fail and you can really see that with this plain piece of primer. Next up we'll move to the spray paint from Walmart 99 cent can and as you can tell it did pretty bad. Um, we have lots of little bits of rust eating through the paint. This edge right here is completely rusted and overall didn't really perform that well. Next two are the Krylons. Now I really didn't know what the difference was between the normal Krylon and the Krylon that's the rust protector. And looking at them both, they really didn't do any different. I think that's honestly the same can, same type of paint, just a different marketing, uh, you know, kind of like a marketing thing with a new label on it with the big rust protector. Because as you can tell, there's rust forming all over the edges. Uh, and that, I mean, it didn't hold up too well. And it's the same with the Krylon rust protector. Lots of rust forming on there. 
And that's only within two weeks. Granted that it was soaking in salt water, but still both of those I'd say performed about the same. And the rust protector one was actually a little more expensive. Granted it was probably only 25 cents more, but I was expecting more out of the rust protection from Krylon opposed to just the regular. So I don't know what's up with that. Next up is the Rust-Oleum. I've had great experience with Rust-Oleum in the past on my bumpers and stuff. And as you can tell, it definitely performed a lot better than these previous four, especially the Krylon. While we do have a little bit of rust uh, starting to form, not near as bad as the Krylon, but still definitely um, nothing great, but this actually did perform a lot better than the Krylon. So right off the bat, Rust-Oleum just beat all those. Now Rust-Oleum Hammered, one that leaves a pretty cool texture. Definitely are seeing some um, rust coming through the paint on the bottom there, as well as on the top. But overall, it didn't do too bad. I This is what I've actually used on my bumper, the front and rear bumper and sliders currently. Um, they all have this paint and it's done pretty well. Granted, it did not do as well as the normal Rust-Oleum. I really do like this texture. It has a really cool texture to it, especially when it's on bumpers. So we'll throw that up there a little bit because it did do pretty good. Next up, Rust-Oleum High Heat. Made for grills and outdoor uh, you know, things that get hot, mostly for grills, did horrible. Um, it's just a ton of rust eating through on the edge there, as well as the flat surface, a lot of rust coming through. So that did not do well. Plasti dip, we noticed that on the first day of the test that it was already eating through. And as you can tell, nope, not good at all. Plast Plasti dip is not very rust resistant. Now, another thing I was very disappointed on is the rust only rust reformer. That garbage, 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 garbage. Um, like I said before, this is more of like a base surface to convert rust to a paintable surface, but actually using this as paint to prevent rust, definitely a no-no. Next up, the most expensive was the Steel It, and this blew all of these out of the water. As you can tell, there is really no rust on it. In the corner here, we're starting to get a tiny bit of rust coming through. Edges don't have any rust. Little tiny bits right there. But if we compare this to, let's do a side-by-side -side between the Steel It and the Rust-Oleum. We can tell um, here we got the Rust-Oleum coming through with the rust. And there are a lot of little bubbles on the paint where the rust is starting to come through. Whereas the Steel It still has a nice matte finish. Uh, there is a little bit up there. But I think that's from where the paint dried because I noticed that on day one. Overall, the Steel It definitely is the winner. And I think the reasoning behind that is just because it actually does have, I mean, it's made from stainless steel. It has, like, it's not a paint. It actually has stainless steel particles in it. Um, this is extremely expensive, 25, 30 bucks a can, depending on, yeah, depending on where you get it. Uh, you can go on Amazon or go to their website and see if you have any local distributors around you that carry them. But the Steel It won, and I was kind of expecting that. Uh, just because of the added expense of it. It's a great paint. But out of all these normal off-the-shelf spray paints, which one won? I would say the Rust-Oleum. That's the one that has the least rust. It's a great paint. It's not expensive. You know, you're looking at $4 a can here. And honestly, there's a reason people stick with Rust-Oleum. It's a great paint. It blew all of these out of the water, um, especially the Krylon. Krylon is just... I would never use that on a metal bumper or anything else automotive where you might see any type of rust or corrosion in the future. So if you're looking for a project and you want something to paint it with, go with the Rust-Oleum. You, you can't beat it. I mean, look at it, guys. We just, we did the test. Pretty easy test. Um, nothing crazy, but I thought this was a pretty cool experiment, especially for those of you that are looking to paint something in the future, you know, at home. I really wanted to see which one was the best for your buck and which one is going to last the longest and clearly Rust-Oleum and Steel It are the two. Now which one would I recommend to paint your bumper with? It really comes down to your budget. If you're just looking for a quick easy paint job, Rust-Oleum is going to be the way to go. Now if you want to do something a little bit, you know, like a more expensive bumper and you want it to last a couple of years, I'd recommend getting a can or two of Steel It. You're just, it's something less you're gonna have to worry about or it's powder coated, but then you're looking at a couple hundred bucks. Now, I actually started using some of the steel it on my axles 
Uh, if you've been watching my previous videos, I laid down a coat of steel it just because it is weldable and we have a lot of uh, a lot of welding to do on these axles. But I'm not going to keep talking about that too long. If you're interested in the axle videos, go check it out. Um, a lot of cool stuff. But these two are the winners. Thanks for watching, guys. Like always, give this video a thumbs up if you will. Subscribe to the channel. Got a lot of cool stuff coming on. So stay tuned. Thanks, guys.